Hey guys, Joshua Peterson or Peterson Electric. It is November 2018. I want to talk to you today about arc fault breakers. Um, I've had a couple videos from eight years ago and six years ago on arc faults. And some of you guys that seem to watch my videos late start trying to bring up a lot of old code. Uh, please keep in mind that the older videos I've done in the past eight, nine years ago when I started, A, I wasn't too good at the videos and I was learning, and B, um, geez, the code has changed, so follow through. But right now, the code book is talking about Article uh, 210.12. We are in the 2017. It will change here in about 18 months in the 2020. I will start retesting again for my classes. Uh, I am part of the independent electrical inspectors. Uh, I enjoy that. I am a contractor, though, but I love hearing the knowledge of those guys and also just tweaking in uh, under radar and finding out new things. But this is going to be about arc faults. For a lot of you guys that criticize it, um, I start to think that maybe you don't understand the way they operate. I personally believe that the arc fault breaker has gotten better and we're in our third year, or third um, generation of them. If you have a baby blue, this is a Siemens. If you have baby blue, this is going to be a dual function. It can matter if it's 20 or 15 amps, sure. If that's going to be a kitchen circuit, kitchen counter outlets, and then maybe that's just going to be um, some lighting that's near a shower in a bathroom uh, for an exhaust fan, for instance, that has to be arc faulted. Uh, and GFCI'd. Now, you don't typically have to arc fault in a bathroom, guys, but I do tend to do that because I bleed through into a closet next to the bathroom, and therefore the closet does have to be arc faulted, so I don't really care about some of those things. Um, but, you know, you got your two-pole full 50s and 40s. Give it time, and you're going to see these AFCI'd in the future, I guaranteed. And then you have your white GFCI'd. When do I do those? Well, my outside plugs or my bathroom plugs if they're not sharing in the other bathroom lighting circuit. Um, so then you finally have a standard breaker, which can be like for an attic fan, of course. Um, but a lot of these you can see now have to be arc fault and GFI. Even if you're running lights downstairs in a basement crawl space that don't have like a GU24 twist plastic cover uh, for your CFL type bulb, uh, those little closet fixtures you can get, it, if you don't have a cover on it like that, then and it's an open, even though it's LED, you still have to have those lights in a crawl space GFCI. Great way to do that is just putting on a GFCI breaker before you head down there. That way in the house, you don't have to worry about any GFCI outlets, just all on the panel. Now, again, I think arc fault protection is really important to have. But if you're pulling in circuits, we used to pull in 14.3 with a black, red, and a white. Well, we no longer really do that anymore. We pull in probably what we call a 14.2.2 or a 12. Uh, two, two. So it's going to have a black, white, a, a red, white, and a red. And so I always keep in mind that I have these guys um, right next to each other in the panel, but you're keeping in mind that the, if you're pulling in a yellow cable that's going to look like this, that's going to have basically 220 amps. And a white cable round like that is going to be basically be four cables there that's going to be a 14 gauge. Um, Keeping in mind, the reason why I favor to do my home runs in a 12-4, because if you, you can see right here, I've got 42 circuits, and inside of this, I've got 3, um, 6, 9, 12, 15, uh, 18, 21, 24. I have 24 home runs in a 42 circuit panel. For one, it, it cuts down on a lot of less cutting in. If I doubled that, I'm, and, and let's say I didn't do 14.22 and 12.22, well, let's say I added another oh, 12 to 15 circuit home runs. This panel gets stuffed like a pig. So I enjoy having to have less fill inside my panel. A lot of guys say we can't splice in a panel. That is incorrect. The code talks about it. I believe it's under cabinets, and I have to look that up. I don't know if that's 312, but anyways, I know where it's at. I can find it. But it does say that you have up to 60% fill inside of a cabinet. Does this look like 60%? It looks like it's more than that, but really it's not. So keep in mind that when you're changing out panels, you can have the port connectors in there as well as your wire caps. Uh, but this panel right here is um, the advantage to the 14 Two two and the twelve two two is less drilling in the top of the beams, and now by code you have to watch in Article three hundred that you don't stuff more than typically two cables in a single hole. We'll go ahead and grate foam those extras we didn't need, but you can put in two now very easily and get this panel cut in. It's a lot cleaner. The disadvantage is cutting it in when it's cold. Right now it's been forty eight degrees and cutting in a fourteen four very slow to peel it and, nick, er, and cut off the backside without nicking anything 
is very easy to nick on these wires, so you got to be cautious. Whereas a 1222, you can rub it and heat it up and then cut it and split it and cut it off, and so you'll see it's a lot quicker to cut them in. Um, the other advantage is you have a lot less grounds inside of the panel when you're running a multi-conductor multi cable. And then when you run the cables, we put in up here uh, some of these stacks. I love using these stacks. They work very, very well. My cable stack is by 3M. Um, but when I come and drop off a home run, for instance, you know, I'll paint it orange right here so I can see and count my home runs to make sure I have 24 home runs throughout this house. And then I know that I'm starting my circuit there and I'll be jumping circuit 14 this way and then circuit 16 this way. So again, I enjoy doing that, but if you don't understand that concept, I would stick with what you normally do on your 14.2. A lot of your bosses might be really cheap about that. That cable is not cheap. Uh, it is a fairly expensive cable with a 12.2 as well. Um, it, by far, people think it's cheaper, but I personally think labor and time is more important. So when I'm running this many home runs above, and down below, I have all my joists that are perpendicular to the stair or parallel to the stairway. I would have to drill every single joist per Article 300, especially because our basement's going to be finished, all the way through to get it down there. So of course, I'm going to walk those beams and walk it across, and then stack it, and then drop off all of my home runs as I feather down because this is a ranch. So again, you guys can choose to do it different ways, but there's advantages to running that wire. It is more expensive. It is harder to cut in. It, it is difficult to remember to do it right on the other side and not mix up your neutrals because you have a red, red, white, and a black, and a black, white, or a black, white. So anyways, guys, hopefully this video, sorry it's getting long. Uh, let, let me know if you have any questions, but I do believe AFCI dual function and GFCI protection is a life safety device. Thanks.